three. Hello and welcome to fourth grade. Get ready to have a fantastic year with your teachers. I am Katie Endor, your fourth grade enthusiast. <laughs> and I am Brittany Glacken, your fourth grade fanatic. We are going to give you the one, two, threes, fours of fourth grade this evening. Communication about, about Black Bun, Seesaw, and a little bit of our curriculum. Okay, so to start us off, um, different types of communication. We picked the four best ways to communicate with us. There's probably more than that, but we have been using Seesaw so far. Um, <clears throat> some of you have already messaged us, on, messaged us on there, which is a great, quick, easy way to get questions to us. Um, and we're also happy to just use regular old Gmail. Um, another way that we talk to you guys is by sending graded papers home. Your child will have a packet of stapled papers sent home with them every Friday. Um, so go ahead and make sure you're asking for them since they don't always offer those up to you. Um, and then also, if you are wondering just like day to day, what's going on in fourth grade? What does my child need to be working on? Please just look in their planner. We write in their planners every single day and check them. Um, and then also, hopefully you've been getting our newsletters that we send out each weekend, and those will be posted on Seesaw and then on BlackBot as well. And speaking of BlackBot, it's new to us all. So I'm going to give you some BlackBot tips as we roll through here. Uh, if you have found in your um, child's profile, you'll find this homeroom class, and it will have a link to our bulletin board. You will see that we have the newsletter there, the parent directory, if you've put in your email address, contact information, right now media events coming up. So there'll be information that's posted there for you in Blackbot. Your child's grades will be there. Your um, notifications are probably not turned on yet. So if you go into your settings, you can turn notifications on. If you would like to receive an email that says, hey, check BlackBot, something's been updated, that's an easy way to go in and get your information um, just emailed to you in uh, whatever email account you'd like. A calendar view it has a nice view of just kind of assignments that are, that are work, working on or have been turned in. And there's also a lot of resources in the resource tab, links um, school-wide that have been posted. So those are just some helpful BlackBot tips for you as we kick off the new year. Okay, just real quick, what do we use Seesaw for? Um, hopefully you've been seeing the pictures that we've been posting. We like to post a lot of things that your kids are doing throughout the day, even though they're getting bigger, you still wanna see them and what they're up to. Um, our newsletters also get put on Seesaw. Once we get going with spelling here in the next week or, so, or two, um, your child will have their individual spelling lists posted on Seesaw for you to find. That way you're not always looking for paper copies or in folders and things. You can practice them in the car easily that way. And then sometimes we'll just have fun activities that um, kind of add to what we're doing in class and what we're teaching that you can also see on Seesaw. And so now we'll look at our curriculum. We will teach many fabulous things in fourth grade this year. Um, some of our subjects like literacy, some reading each and every day, working on um, just building reading stamina as we get going here in the year, working, we're doing benchmarking right now. So we'll um, get ready to jump into reading groups and do some mini lessons with reading as well. Um, and then for writing, we cover a couple different genres of writing. We'll do realistic fiction stories this fall. And then after Christmas, we move into nonfiction and we'll be writing tons and tons of essays. Um, and then we end the year with some poetry and then kind of thrown in there, we just work on editing skills all year long and just short writing things that kind of go along with science and social studies as well. And then, um, this is a nerf we'll talk about spelling. Spelling, uh, their lists are individualized. So we are looking at things that they're 
um, in writing, maybe if they have commonly misspelled words, we can pull that into their spelling list and then word skills for the week um, or challenge words if they're ready for that. So they will be listening to the test, taking the pretest, choosing lists um, that are tailored to them. And then grammar is kind of a mix of both direct instruction and then we just meet with them in their small writing groups and look at what skills are they ready to learn and what skills have they mastered already. And so we kind of work in small reading groups, but then there will be times when we also are just doing like a whole class lesson on certain grammar skills throughout the year. And for social studies, I am your wonderful social studies teacher. Uh, I'm super passionate about it. And so in social studies this year, we cover uh, the U.S. regions and we really talk about the geography of them and the culture of those regions and why it's grouped together the way it is. Um, we will be learning all 50 states and capitals this year and then some important landforms in each region. So we'll take a map test um, to go with each region and chapter that we're working on. We talk a lot about the history of how America was founded um, and we cover from the pilgrims up to about 1800 and then I also really try to hit home some of those American principles and we talk about the constitution and the bill of rights and what it means to be a good citizen and um, voting and elections and supporting our veterans and our military and things like that. There are some excellent conversations that come out of her class mm -hmm. so your kids will <laughs> they will get a lot out of it this year. Uh, and so then I'm your math guru. Um, so here are some topics that we'll be working on just our, as we start the year, we're getting into place values, numbers, operations, um, starting with equations and algebra, uh, multiplication division, the measurement data and graphing and geometry, working with a protractor maybe for the first time or a compass even. Um, so the homework will be, it's in their math book. We'll just go with um, 15 problems, three nights a week for math, and, and those will all be due the last day of the week. So typically on Fridays, they'll be due that they can be um, hidden in their assignment and they can work on those listed assignments during the week. They'll find that in their planner. And then I also teach science for the kids. And so our science curriculum is FOSS and it's very experiment and inquiry based. So that means you won't be seeing a lot of homework coming home. Occasionally there will be something for them to work on, um, but most of it is hands-on and it's experiments and fun, fun things. So we really talk about the scientific process. And then our two huge units that we hit are erosion and landforms in the fall. And then we um, look at how the land is shaped that way. And then we talk about energy and electricity and natural resources um, after Christmas. And we do a fun wire up a shoebox project and make it light up. And then we also move into building a telegram and transferring energy. So it's a lot of really fun stuff. And then for religion. So we have our um, Christian character formation project. And we have the seven virtues that we focus on throughout the year. So each week we focus on one virtue that goes along with our Bible story, story starting from Genesis, the beginning of the Bible, working our way all the way through the Bible. And um, just each lesson, we always come back to that Christ connection and how our lessons, um, how Jesus is in the Bible, even from the very beginning, we've already talked about there in Genesis this past week. So um, memory work is usually it'll be fill in the blank. Right now we're working on the books of the Bible. Maybe you've heard that fun song. And uh, so normally memory work will be Fridays, uh, fill in the blank where they have the words there. They're spelled out for them, just putting them in the right order. Um, maybe answering a question that we've talked about in religion for the week. So we use our notebook to help with notes and just keeping track of the things that we've discussed. Okay, bonus. and then bonus, um, just some common questions that we get asked a lot from parents. Um, how can you help your kids at home in fourth grade? So number one, we really start to work on self-advocacy with the kids. Um, making sure that they feel like they can approach their teachers is a really important skill. And we want them to start 
if they have a question at home, start emailing us. They all have a Gmail account or you can help them get on Seesaw on your own accounts and type the question, help them sit down and learn how to do that or write them a sticky note and send it in with them in the morning so that they can talk to us in person. Um, something else, just keep being organized. So your child has a planner. Um, so writing, we write in that. We kind of check it off each day, each week as we're moving through the week. Um, they put it in their folder. So they have an expandable folder, some sort of organization device. Um, and then Blackboard to connect with you. Um, and you can check things there in Blackboard for grades and assignments. And then um, for number three, we just ask that you let it be their work. We know they're fourth graders, they're 10, 11. Some of them are still nine. We don't expect things to be perfect. Um, we just wanna know where they're really at so that we can help them grow. And we can't always know that if everything is coming home, um, parent checked and perfect. So be involved, ask them questions, sit down and help them when they need it. But by no means do we need everything to be 100% correct. And then just time management, um, just helping them set up a routine of working on their spelling or their memory work a little bit each day, not saving everything for the night before, um, that procrastination part. So building good study habits that'll help them into their future. And if you happen to have any more questions, you're welcome to email us or pop in and say hello. Um, we're happy to talk to you and answer anything that you might want to know. We hope you have a good evening. Thanks for joining us.